Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games. In this video we're going to be doing a deep dive into sprites, their built-in properties, and some very useful functions associated with them. This is going to be useful for Game Maker Studio 1 and 2, so let's do it. So Game Maker Studio stores a huge collection of information about every single sprite you put into your game. That includes the X and Y offset, when it's loaded, the width and height, alpha, and even more. We're going to look at those, but first let's start with how Game Maker actually views a sprite. You can see here I've got a sprite opened up in the sprite editor window, and it is actually a collection of sub-images, which the computer begins counting at zero right here, which computers tend to do. So a sprite can have zero to as many sub-images as you would like. I got one up to 300 and it was still working just fine. Uh, the code that you are actually going to use, the built-in property, is image index to actually access these specific frames or sub images depending on how you want to look at it uh, they're both the same thing that's the actual built-in property that you can access so if i type in image index here you can see that it turns green as a built-in property and if i back up one you'll actually see it autofill right here so image index you can specifically know where your sprite is at inside of its animation cycle this can be used in a lot of different ways, but a very practical one is actually with uh, menus. So I've got a button right here, and I have it have two sub-images. So it has 0 and 1, and they're a little bit different. And the way that I would use this is this image would be in my game, and when the player hovers over it, I would actually change it to the next sub-image, therefore showing the player that they are hovering over it. And you can have another one for when it clicks, you could have one for when it plays an animation, and you could store all of that inside of one sprite, as long as you used code to say, do go through this series of sub-images at this time, this series through another. Technically, you could have all of these sprites right here inside of just one sprite because they're all just composed of sub images that Game Maker Studio looks at and bundles up into something that is much more usable and easily accessible to us. All right, that is image index, so you know exactly where your sprite is, and you can change that at any time that you want to go to a specific one to get information about something that's happening. A very useful example as well is this right here. So I have an animation where this girl is attacking, and if we wanted to say uh, only check for damage when it looks like she's actually swinging her knife, which is at sub image 0, 1, 2, so we have 2, 3, and 4, here she's actually swinging and attacking. If we had code that said, during this series of sub-images, if she strikes anybody, deal damage to them. That is something that you can do, and is actually a very useful way of doing like an action RPG, setting up to see when you actually hit something. Another very useful built-in property is called image speed, which if we come in here and we type that in, image speed, uh, determines how quickly your image is going to play, how quickly your sprite is going to run through all of its sub-images. Now you can set that right here, and if we set it to one, uh, one doesn't actually mean like one sub-image per frame or per second or whatever, it's actually saying inside of the sprite editor window, whatever you set that speed to, one is going to play that speed. So if we jump over here again to the attack, and if I press play, you can see here that the speed is 15. If I change this to frames per game frame, all of a sudden it's going to jump up and go really quickly. But, so we probably don't want that. And you can adjust this speed as much as you want inside of the game editor. Um, and then that speed right here is going to be reflected on this built-in property that you change. So one is going to play it at 10 frames per second. Uh, right yeah, frames per second. Uh, and if you change it to 0.5 over here, it will half it. And if you change it to 1.5, it will double that speed. And that is image speed, which you can adjust dynamically through your game when the character is running, when they're walking, when they're sneaking. You can change sprites, you can change the sub images to play at different speeds at any time that you'd like using this image speed built in variable. Now, there's a lot of functions also associated with sprites that give you a lot of functionality, things that you can do with them. So we're going to open up the manual, 
And we're going to look at some of these. I'm going to go to search, type sprites, and click on the top one, and just go back right here to sprites. So I'm going to press F12 so we have more viewing right here. Now, what we've been looking at so far is the sprite instance variables, okay? Um, we have looked at the image, uh, where's that, image index and image speed. Those are things that we can actually change as we are running the game. But there are some things that you cannot alter, such as the sprite width, height, X offset and Y offset. Those functions specifically, or those built-in variables, actually get you information about the sprite. They do not let you alter them. Um, but they are still useful nonetheless. Now, let me clarify this uh, category right here, this sprite instance variables. Um, an instance is a specific instance. <laughs> They have a good word for it, but if you're not familiar with it, it sounds kind of confusing. Uh, an instance is an object in your game that doesn't refer to the overall object, but the one that is currently inside of it. So if I open up my room, I've got two objects right here. I have both the same thing, but one of these I can alter and change, and it will not affect the other one. These are instances of my object obj western girl so you can see that they are a little different uh based on the information and the manipulation that i've done to them they are they come from obj western girl and they share the same sprite but they are different now a really cool thing is all of these except for the ones i showed you right here you can adjust inside of the room editor and through code so let me show you inside of the room editor if we double click on this we have color which corresponds to blend so if we change that to anything she'll change to that color uh, we've got rotation which we can set right here you can also uh, drag as you saw i did here uh, you've got you can flip the x and the y you've got scale and you have x and y coordinates so you can specifically set it in a spot that you would want it to be all of those you can access right here and of course you can access them through code and if you want examples, you can click on it and you can actually see they've got some picture examples and code and some practical examples that you can do that with. Now, the next set of information that we're going to go over is called sprite manipulation. These actually refer to the sprite that Game Maker Studio has loaded into uh, its banks, its data banks. So if you are going to use any of these functions, you need to be very careful because they are going to change every single sprite inside of your game, which you probably are not going to want it to do. These sprites are going to change these sprites over here, not the ones specifically running in your game. So if you had uh, something in your game where uh, an event in your world happened and all of a sudden you want all of, you, all of your monsters to be red, well, this might be a good way to do that because then you can change the colors of all of them, the actual sprite itself. But probably you don't want to do that because you don't want to manipulate the sprites themselves because if you do that, everything else that you then change about sprites are going to be affected. They're going to look different. They're going to be different. You can also, up here, sprite information, you can get a lot more information about sprites through these functions. Uh, they are about the base sprite again, these ones right here. So if you want to get the actual name, number, speed of these, not the ones running in your game specifically, not the instances, you can use these functions to do that, which again, can be very useful, all right? Now, the very last thing I want to talk about is skeletal animation. These are a set of functions that if you have a, a character who is animated and exported specifically to work with Spine, then you can use these functions to get detailed information about how it's animated, where it's at in the animation process. You could set bone data, get bone data, as you can see down here. I don't have much experience with this and I haven't seen very many people use it. It's a very niche market, but I want you to know that they are here and that Game Maker Studio provides functions if you want to do very detailed granular uh, animation inside of Game Maker Studio itself. Now, let me show you one practical example of what I've got here. So I'm gonna delete this image speed and I've got this variable called my alpha, which is gonna set the alpha. 
and I've got a step here, step event that is just gonna say, if the sprite index is equal to the die animation, because this is the player, so you'd be changing the sprites every now and then, if they're moving, walking, attacking, whatever. Um, and so we're gonna say, if it's that, and we're checking the image index, we're gonna draw a game over and then have it appear over time if it's at a specific image index. So I'm just gonna press play and you can watch this go. So that is just using uh, image index, sprite index, and a little bit of image speed so that I can do something unique and interesting inside of my game. And you can see here that this is freaking out because it uh, hasn't been set the image speed. It's just the default, as you can see. Um, hopefully that is helpful to you guys, though. Uh, I really enjoyed doing this deep dive. If this is something you'd like to see more of, please let me know. There's a lot more about Game Maker Studio that I could go into, but I want to know that you guys are actually interested in finding this out. So with that, uh, that's all I've got for you. So thank you very much for joining me. And as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. If you'd like to support me more than just liking and subscribing to my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon like all of the awesome people on the screen right now. They get to vote on upcoming tutorials and get one-on-one -on -one training sessions with me each month. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you later.